Okay. Um, while I'm thinking about it, I want to remove the code that lets me select tiles. Uh, you guys remember this? This part. That's not what it's supposed to do. We don't want that. So I'm going to go here into my picture one mouse down and just simply remove the stuff right out of there, that code. I'm going to leave it just in case you want to make more levels later. You know, um, you know, because there's like a lot of variations on how you can do a Pac-Man level. Uh, plus you could come up with some cool stuff that are variations that they've never done in the original game. You, know, you get portals all over the place. You just have to code them all in. Um, let's see. What should be done next? You know, let's make it the where you can win the game. Uh, one way to do it, which I am way too lazy to do, is figure out how many pellets there are and then say that once the score equals that number, you know you've eaten every pellet. There's no way I'm going to do that. It's just not going to happen. So, here, somewhere, after, where do we have the pellet code where he eats a pellet? Um, let's see. Somewhere in here it'll say that tile equals zero. That was the end of the line. So let me just run a search for it. A, B equals zero. Uh, I thought that's what it would be. It's probably a little bit off and I'm not seeing it. Let's see. I will find it. Here we go. Uh, if his animation is zero, he lands on a tile that is a pellet. Score increases and the tile becomes blank. So what I'm going to do is turn this into a block if. Keep all that. Oh, f for those of you who might be new to this, the colon here in VB, it's an old trick. I don't think anybody anywhere wants you to actually use this. It's very sloppy. It kind of means and do this also. You can string together things that would normally be their own line just by slapping a colon in there. And, uh, I tend to do it because it's an old habit, and uh, it's to me it's it's another way of grouping things for myself. Uh, like some people use tabs to organize their thoughts, kind of in their code. The tabs aren't necessary; they don't do anything. Um, in the same way, I tend to group certain things by just slapping them all in the same line. Now, what I'm going to do here is say uh, I'm going to make another variable, just call it OK. Uh, for z equals 1 to 19, for w equals 1 to 19, this is going to check and see if we have any pellets left. If tile zw equals 2, that's the pellet, or tile equals 3, which is the super pellet, then ok equals 1. So, by the time it's done with that loop, if there are any pellets or super, if there are no pellets and no super pellets, OK will be equal to zero, because this will have never occurred. So we can say right here, if OK equals zero, then timer one dot enabled equals false. Message box, you win, and then end the program again. So that's set. Uh, we need code for what's left here. We need code for those big old honking super pellets. I don't know what they're actually called. We gotta put those in. Um, and I'm gonna need to hard code those in. I believe they're just at the four corners, usually. So let me go to our form. We had coded those blank spaces in. I'm gonna do the same kind of thing with the four corners. Now since the very edge is 1-1, one, one, that just means tile 2, 2 equals 3, which is the super pellet. Tile A, 2, 2 equals... Where's that? 0, 1, 2. There's a reason I have two pictures for that. And tile B, 2, 2 equals 0. Um going to have a couple of these. 2, 2, 19, 19 is the edge, so that means 18, 2. The very bottom one would be 18, 18, and 2, 18. These should be the numbers, if I'm doing this right in my head. Um, let's see. 
Hey, look at that, it works. Now we should animate them. So, you know what, since we're drawing the whole screen anyways in the timer, um, we don't have to worry about specifically drawing, redrawing those four as they animate, you know, and all that kind of stuff. But, let's do this. In other words, by being sloppy, we save ourselves a little bit of work right here. Animation's already moved, so here's what we want to do. If tile 2, 2 equals 3, um, and, here we go, um, and, and I equals 0, then tile A2 equals 2. Let's do this. And a and i equals zero, or a and i equals one. Let's do two. I'm just gonna delete those. And I'll come back to them later. And a was two or three, then it equals three. Take this whole section, copy it, copy, copy. We should have. 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, and 18. Uh, same thing should be done here to match. That should animate them. Yeah, look at that, they flash. Isn't that cool? Now, we don't have code yet for picking those up, so we should do that. We head in here when the pellets disappear, which I, you know, I was looking for that earlier and I lost it. Now, Oh, it was here. I'm just going to copy the whole thing. It's not going to have all the same stuff. In fact, there's no wind condition. There's no looking to see what kind of pellets there are. We don't need that. So this is getting pretty simple, actually. If it equals 3, uh, let's not increase the score, because I don't know if the score is supposed to increase as you do that. So uh, that's it. Um, I'm not going to make it a block if because I try not to have block ifs if I don't need them, just personal preference. And at the end of all this, we need to say uh, super, I believe, was the name of the variable. Super, yes. Super equals what's a good amount of time? Maybe 100 number of ticks? Let's just say 100. Uh, right now, that variable being set does absolutely nothing. So, you know what I'm going to do just to make sure that it works? Well, at first let's see if those things disappear like they're supposed to. Alright, cool, disappears. Now, where the ghosts chase you. That would be... Where do we... Here. Yep, this is how the ghosts... This is the AI for the ghosts. Let's do this. If super equals zero, then. So, what happens here? I'm not going to block if the thing just because it's too much. If he's not super, not invincible or whatever, the ghosts normally try to chase him. I paste it here. If super is greater than zero, they're going to want to go in exactly the opposite direction. So, this would be three and one. This would be 4 and 2. And if you're wondering how I suddenly memorized these things, I didn't. It's that the two A's, I swapped the numbers. And the two B's, I swapped the numbers, so it's the opposite. So, uh, no, I have not actually start memorized what each number uh, is. I'm sort of cheating. 1 and 3. So... The pictures gonna they don't look any different, but as soon as I hit this thing, the ghosts should change direction. Ah oh, yeah, figures. Okay, I'm dead. Let me try this again. Ah, uh, wait. I'm sure there's a lot of people laughing at me now because I messed that up. The ghosts run from me. See this? It works. Now in a minute or so, once that hundred is run out, they're gonna start chasing me again. I have no idea. Oh, I don't have anything telling Super to wear off. I'm going to need that, right? 
I'll just slap it anywhere, I guess it doesn't matter. If super is greater than zero, then super equals super minus one. Now, at some point, that will wear off. Okay, run away from me, ghosts. Right now, if I, ru if I do run into one, even though they're afraid of me, I'll still die because we don't have any code for that. Hey, did you see, see the uh, orange ghost, or peach? He ran through the portal thing. So that works even for the ghosts. We hadn't tested it yet. And I'm dead. Uh, how much time have I got? Oh crud, no time. I'm saving the video. Hopefully it's not over 10 minutes.